Now, Granny Zedner, I believe that's our ring. I know this long, I believe you're right. I'll see. Hello, John M. Down store. This is Lama and Abner. What's going on down in Pine Ridge? Well, this is the final day of Squire Skimp's court battle against Lum and Abner. And so far, the squire has had things all his own way. In fact, one half of the defendants, Lum, is still missing after his mysterious disappearance the first day of the trial. As we look in on the little community today, we find Grandpappy Spears on the witness stand at the courthouse at the county seat. He's being questioned by the defense attorney... Mr. DeLonge. Yeah, I'm afraid I jumped the track there. You better come up with that question again, son. Well, uh, the question, Mr. Spears, was this. You stated that you saw Mr. Skimp walking along the street in Pine Ridge after his fall in the theater. Now, uh, could you describe Mr. Skimp at the time you saw him? Describe him? Yes. Mm -hmm. Why, sure, I can describe him. He's a low-down, ornery, pigeon-toed, underhanded, knock-kneed, uh, flat-footed, somebody that I would... Your Honor, merely a personal opinion. Uh, objection sustained. Mr. Spears, I, uh, I think you misunderstood the question. I meant, could you describe Mr. Skimp with regard to his posture? Regards to his what? I mean, uh, was he walking uh, bent over as though crippled, or was he uh, walking straight up, or what? Oh, he was walking straight as anybody. Straight as a pigeon-toed stick. Yes, sir, sir. All right, that's all, Mr. Spears. Thank you. Straight as a pigeon-toed stick. witness, Mr. Clark. Straight as walking. <clears throat> all right, uh, Mr. Spears, a short time ago, you were in Mr. Skim's employ, were you not? Uh, come over that again now. You were in Mr. Skimp's employ a short time ago. Is that correct, Mr. Spears? You mean I was working for him? That's correct. Well, he hired me to play the player pioneer at a show he's running in, but the varmint fired me. Ah, he fired you. You and Mr. Skimp had a falling out after that, didn't you? Ain't spoke to him since then, hardly. I see. Don't aim to, neither. Mm-hmm. Mr. Spears, the day you saw Mr. Skimp on the street, what color suit was he wearing? Oh, I don't know what color suit he's wearing. Yes. All right. Was it a clear day? Was the sun shining? Now, uh, listen, son. I ain't up here to answer a batch of idiotic questions. I'm afraid, Mr. Spears, you'll have to answer this one. Was it a dark, cloudy day? How should I know? I ain't no weather vane or All right. weather profiteer. <laughs> then was Mr. Skimp carrying anything? I don't know. I never paid no minds to him. I don't like him that well. Uh -huh. In other words, you didn't see if he was carrying anything or what color clothes he was wearing or whether it was cloudy or the sun was shining. Well, I know he's walking straight as a pigeon-toed stick. I yes, know that. You said no, that. it's good. You said that, Mr. Spears. But would you answer this question? Did you have your glasses on at the time? Sure I had them on. I can't see hardly nothing with them on. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. You may return to your seat now, Mr. Spears. Call the next witness for the defense, please. No more witnesses, Your Honor. The defense rests. Well, uh, before counsel present their closing arguments to the jury, there'll be a brief recess. All right, Jiminy Grant. <laughs> uh, yes, I told him a thing or two, didn't I, Abner? <laughs> you told him all right. You sure That's did. smart Alec Clark. I don't like him no better than I do Squire. Oh, no. I, I believe you said some wrong things there a time or two, though. Said some wrong things? Yeah, every time you said something, Mr. DeLong just sat here and just groaned. Why, ain't he feeling well? Well, to be honest, I don't believe he is. He ain't happy, I know that. And facts is, I ain't feeling my level best myself. Well, I don't blame you none, Abner. I, I can understand that. Not with the way this pigeon toed trials went. Oh, no. It's just about ready to go to the jury now. And far as I can see, there's just one verdict they can bring in. I know it. You ain't got oh. a chance in the wide world, Abner. Not a chance. Why did Squire ever fall down in our picture show in the first place? I wish Lom was here. That's what I wish. Yeah. Yeah, you might have had a little better show if he'd have stuck around. Oh, my life, Grandpap. Oh, my whole life. I've always tried to do the right thing. The right thing by everybody. And now look at me. Look at the fix I've got myself in. Oh, it's a shame, Lum, running out on you like you done. Oh, me. Leaving you to face everything. 
It's going to be terrible lonesome in that penitentiary cell all by yourself. Grandpap, don't say that. I don't want to think about a penitentiary. I'm sorry I said it. I it's don't want to I'll visit you. I'll visit you. I don't want nobody to visit me. I'm going in there. Make potatoes and cookies and one thing or another. I don't want to see nobody in the world. It's a downright not need shame. Well, I can't he understand whatever come over long. No, I mean... But it's like I always say, Abner, you can't never tell about people. Now, you take, for instance, Orlo Wormley. I don't want to hear about Orlo Wormley. Orlo Wormley was an upstanding man. Man, man. I told you, I don't want to hear nothing about Orlo Wormley. All right, court the judge, the judge gonna call court. Order, please. Counsel for the plaintiff, go ahead with your closing argument. Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Poor old Wormley was a right living of hey, fellas I've ever known. Ladies and oh. gentlemen of the jury. Look at that smart eye. Right? There is really very little for me to say. You have heard all the evidence in this case, which you have attentively listened to and intelligently evaluated in your own minds. Huh. And I am sure that with such a preponderance of evidence in the favor of the plaintiff, uh, Mr. Skimp, you can reach but one conclusion. That Mr. Skimp is entitled to recover damages far in excess of the mere thousand dollars that he's asking. In the first place, we have shown you how Mr. Skimp innocently purchased a ticket to the theater owned and operated by the defendant. How he, uh, how he entered the theater... And because of the almost criminal carelessness of those owners to provide adequate lighting, he was caused to fall and sustain an injury from which he may never fully recover. I hope he don't stop farming snake in the weeds. I hate and you despise know, that. Your Honor, to... I am forced to ask you to have the defendants kindly listen to the testimony and the closing arguments. Yes, you're exactly right, Mr. Clark. The defendant will please give his undivided attention. I give not. Thank you, Your Honor. Now, we have further proved to you the extent and seriousness of that injury by the X-ray picture which you all saw and uh, which you may further examine during your deliberations in the jury room. You will recall that it was the defendant's own doctor, the defendant's doctor, who described the details of that X-ray to you. In conclusion, we have produced documents written and signed by the defendant wherein they not only admit but they claim all responsibility for the accident Mr. Skimp suffered in their theater. We have... Right, don't just wait a minute here. Wait just a minute. Order Hold everything. Yeah, but look here, Judge. There, there's Lom coming down now. Order right there. Order in the court. Yeah, but but the you judge, better sit down, Mr. Peabody. Huh? You better sit down. You'll get fined for contempt of court. And things are going badly enough as it is. There's nothing you can do now. Well, he might... Hey, Lom! Come here, Lom. Where about you been? Order, are you hurt? Order, I'm please. talking to Lom. Lom, are you hurt, Lom? Oh, I'm all right, Abner. I'll tell you about it later. Uh -huh. Judge, Your Honor, I, I want to reopen up this case. Oh, my. You hear that, Grandpap? Well, Mr. Edwards, uh, counsel for both the plaintiff and the defense have rested their case. Uh -oh. And the court will not reopen for further testimony unless, of course, there is adequate proof of new evidence. Well, I, Grannies, I got some new evidence. I know it, I know it, I know it, I know it. Please approach the bench <laughs> with your counsel, Mr. Edwards. Hooray for Lom. Good old Lom. Hooray for him. Come on, Mr. DeLonge. Just a moment. I object to this, Your Honor. This is ridiculous. It's highly irregular. It's it's mere pettifoggery. It's a trap. Mr. Clark, uh, this court will hear all evidence pertaining to this case. Hey, Lom, can I approach the bench, too? Whatever no, that you is. you stay there, Abner. I know his grandpap. This is exciting, ain't it? Oh, <laughs> thank oh, Lom's back. What in the <laughs> world are they talking about anyway? I wish I know. Look there. Oh, oh Lom's whispering something to the judge there and, and our lawyer, Mr. DeLon. Yeah, yeah. reckon how come Lom decided to come back? I don't know. I'm sorry. He has some new evidence. Yeah. Reckon what it is. I'd give anything to know what he's doing up there right now. Doggy's grandpa. <laughs> that long, you never can tell what he's got up his sleeve. No, no you just can't tell man. about humans. Have you take, for instance, Arlo Wormley. Oh, be now, quiet about him now, Grandpa. I don't oh, want to hear about Arlo Wormley. Oh, wishes to reopen his case. Call your next witness, please. Well, listen to that. We would like to call Mr. Skimp, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Skimp, take the stand. You were sworn in before. Go ahead. Now, go ahead, Squire. Get up there. Uh, yeah, we want to ask a couple of questions about that X-ray picture. 
Uh, no, just a moment, Your Honor. Just a moment. My client has given full testimony in this trial, and I do not think he should be requested to testify further. I'll tell you why he don't want to testify no more. Uh, okay. Because he knows we can prove that that x-ray ain't a picture of his back at all. It's a picture of somebody else's back. Somebody else? Why, Lom Edwards, that's preposterous. Preposterous, is it? Yes, well, I'll even tell you whose final columns it actually is. It's a feller by the name of Jack Logan. Uh, uh, Jack Logan? Why, he's in Fort Smith, Lum. Well, whereabouts do you think I've been the last couple of days? Uh, what's that, what's that, Lum? Order, order. Mr. Edwards, if you have anything to say to this court, say it from the witness stand. Uh, well, uh, now, wait, wait is that's just what I'll do. Swear me in, Bailey. Uh, now, just a minute, Lum. Bailey, if I've got plenty I want uh, to say. Your Honor, uh, may it please the court, I, I've been thinking this matter over. And I'm deeply disturbed that the proceedings have taken this regrettable turn. Uh, Mr. Edwards and myself have been the best of friends for many, many years. And I should hate to see us become parted over anything as inconsequential as a court trial. Now, therefore, in the interest of old friendship, and because I place that comradeship far above any amount of money... I wish to withdraw the charges that I have made against my good friends. All right, all right. Case dismissed. The uh, jury members see the bailiff in regard to their checks. Dismissed. Our doggies were free, Grandpa. Well, I'll be a monkey's pigeon toed on. <laughs>